Welcome back to part two of the video series where we're making a magazine article in Adobe InDesign. We haven't got much left to go in this surfing article. We've just got to put some pictures in and we should be all finished up. So to put some pictures into this article, what we need to do is go to the file menu and we're going to go to place. And the first image we want to place into this document looks like this. What it is is a PNG image with a transparent background. Okay, what we're going to get, do is get the text to wrap around this picture. So I'm going to click on open and you'll see that on my mouse cursor now I've got a little picture of uh, Mick Fanning there that's following my mouse cursor. And what I can do is click and drag on the page to drop this in. So I'm just going to put it on the left hand side of the page. I'm going to go all the way down to the black border here. I might even stretch the frame up while holding shift and just get it up to the top of that black line there. And you can move it around. Your guide should show you when you've got it in the middle of the page. It should pop up pink like that. So that's right in the center of that page. I might even um, just hold shift and stretch it down a little bit so it's snapping onto the black down the bottom there. Oops. I forgot you have to hold uh, control and shift when you resize in InDesign otherwise it doesn't resize the picture I'm just going to move that across a little bit uh, I'll just keep resizing this till I get it right, I nearly got it there we go, it looks pretty good and I'll just put it back in the center of the page now one thing you might have noticed when you put this picture in that it's quite pixelated and that's because InDesign doesn't load it at its full quality to try and help speed up your computer but what you can do is go up to your view menu, go to, to display performance and choose high quality display and that will fix your picture up and make it appear at its full resolution. Okay, so the issue we've got at the moment is the text is running behind the picture and Mick Fanning's head and body there is chopping off some of the words. So what we need to do is get that text to wrap around our image. So let's use our black arrow to select the image and then we're going to go over to our text wrap panel. If you can't see the text wrap panel, just go to your window menu and select text wrap. Now inside text wrap, what I'm going to do is click this third option here, which, which allows us to wrap the text around an object or a shape. Okay. okay, so at the moment it's wrapping around the bounding box. Okay, we need to fix that as well. So we go down to where it says contour options and change it from same as clipping to detect edges. And InDesign is going to look at this picture and look at all this empty space around Mick Fanning and that's pretty much the edges there and it's going to wrap the text around that picture now. Now I can see up around his head here the text is a little bit too close to his head so what we're going to do this first little option here where we've got zero at the moment we're going to turn it up. You just keep turning it up until you're happy with a little margin Oops, around his body. You can see the white space there now. You don't want the text too close click off it and have a look. That looks pretty nice to me there now. So the text is running nicely around the shape of his body. Okay, so I'm happy with how that image is looking for the time being. We've still got a bit of space for one more picture over here on the right hand side. So, whoops, just move my screen back here. Let me go back to file and place. I'm going to place the second picture in which is this picture of Mick Fanning surfing. Okay, and like before, the mouse cursor will just have the little picture following it until you click on the page and resize it. So I'm just going to click and drag on the page. That's going to drop the picture in. Okay, we're going to roughly put it in the center of the page there, at the, just up near the top. And what we're going to do with this picture is a similar sort of thing. We're going to wrap the text around the object shape. Okay, and I'm going to turn up this first option here so we get a bit of a border, a bit of white space around it. So it doesn't look too too cluttered. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I can see now that I've got this red plus sign at the bottom, which means we're cutting off some text from this text box. So I'm probably gonna have to resize this picture. So holding control and shift, I'm just gonna resize this picture and make it a bit smaller. Okay, I'll probably have to make it a bit smaller again. Okay, we still got a bit of text running outside the text box here. So I might leave this picture as it is for the minute, but it's going to have to change the line spacing or the letting in a moment. But I want to work this picture for the time being. I've got it in the center of the page. Okay, and you don't just have to sit with a plain rectangular image in InDesign. It allows you to do some cool stuff to it. 
First thing I'm going to do is just put a border around it or a stroke. So at the top, I'm going to choose a black stroke. Maybe make it size 2 or 3, whatever you think looks good. I'll go up to size 3. That looks good. And the other thing I'm going to do is grab my white arrow, okay, my direct selection tool from my toolbox, and just click on the border of my shape. So that where it, when it turns blue, that's when you want to click on your shape. Once you've clicked on your shape and you've got that blue box, hover over one of the corners and then simply drag it in, like so. That chops off some of your picture. Okay, the picture will stay the same size, it just chops off, we just resize the frame really, and we just chop off some of the picture. I can do it again for another corner, so drag it in like this. Okay. You can do all sorts of weird and wacky things with your pictures, but I was just showing you there what it's capable of. Okay, and as I've resized that, it looks like it's fixed our issue with the text down here. We've got a little bit of space now at the bottom actually, so I might be able to click on this picture and hold Control and Shift and just resize it a little bit. I'll just push it back into the center. Okay, there's the pink line which shows me we're in the center. And now we've got our image in position. The text is wrapping around it nicely. It fits perfectly on two pages. If I go back across now, we've got a pretty decent looking two-page spread. Okay. Uh, Mick Fanning here is just going a little bit over that black border, so I might have to nudge him up a little bit. It's not really going to affect the look of the page. Um, so that's about it. So what we need to do now is save it ready for print. So we need to go to the File menu. First of all, I just save it as an InDesign document. Okay, so give it a name like Surf Article, and just save it up into your account. That saves it as an InDesign document, so you can come back and edit it if need be. But the way we save for print is go to File, and we go down to Export. Okay, and what we want to export it as is an Adobe PDF for print. So that's the second option there. I'm going to leave it as Surf Article and click Save. And when we click Save, another box comes up. There's a lot of stuff here you can play around with. Have a look at it in your own time. The main thing you want to look at is Marks and Bleed. And when you send your work off to the printers, you need to have a bleed line on it. So just click Use Document Bleed Settings. So that'll include the 3mm bleed area around the magazine article. And a lot of printers like crop marks as well. So it's a good idea to include crop marks in your PDF. Okay, apart from that, you've already got it set to high quality print. So it's already going to save it 300 pixels per inch, which is ready for print. You can click Export. Um, it's got a little bit of overset text. That means my text down here has just been chopped off. So what I'm going to do is click Cancel. There's that little red plus sign. It means that some text has gone outside the page. That'd be right. So I'll just resize my image and make it a little bit smaller. Let's fix the text issue. I'll just quickly export that one more time. Now it's PDF print. Click Save. Go to Marks and Bleed. Check Crop Marks. Check document bleed settings, click export. I don't need to see that anymore. I know that all the text is fitting in now. So click OK. It's probably just a little bit of space down there that's getting chopped off. That's basically it. That will save in your account. If, um, don't worry about that box. If I just go into my folder now and have a look at that, I'll open up my surf article. It's saved as a PDF, so I'll open it up. Now remember when you open this up, the first page will be blank. This was a three-page document. Okay, so this is opened up in a fairly large size. I might just have to resize this so it fits in the video area. It's just going a little bit slow. Okay, I've just resized it. I'll just close that menu option off there. And this is the blank first page. If I scroll down, I'll start to see how the other pages look. So here they are. Okay, in the corners you'll see the crop marks. Okay, that's where the printing machine would cut our page. We've got a little bit of excess colour over the outside of those crop marks. And that's our bleed area. Okay, so we've got a little bit of room for error if the printer doesn't cut quite on those lines. You can see it's a nice high quality document, 300 pixels per inch. Here's page 2, that funny shape there. You can zoom out a little bit if you want to see it. That full screen. And that looks pretty nice. If I was to see that in a magazine, I'd be very happy with how it looked. So that's how we've got it all saved, ready for print. You can close it all up and you're done.